Marley Bird, and I'm the National Spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. And it is my privilege to tell you about a brand new yarn from Red Heart called Loop It. Loop It is a finger looping fun yarn, meaning you don't have to be a knitter or a crocheter to use it. You get to create some beautiful knitted fabric all with your fingers. In this video, I will show you how to use this wonderful yarn so that way you can run out, grab your yarn, and get started today. Loop It comes in a multitude of beautiful colors, both solid and variegated. The put up of Loop It yarn is 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. That's roughly about 7 meters. To complete the scarf on the ball band, you would need two balls of this Loop It yarn. To complete a baby blanket, you might need anywhere from six to eight balls. What makes Loop It so special? It's the actual construction of the yarn. No longer do you have to fiddle with yarn and needles to make stitches. The Loop It yarn has the stitches already made for you. Check it out. All of these loops on this yarn are your actual stitches you will be working into. So there's no more mess, no more fuss, no more drop stitches. And you don't have to use any special tools. As I mentioned earlier, only your fingers. To jump in, why don't we go ahead and learn how to do the knit stitch. When working with the loop at yarn and the knit stitch, we will go ahead and count off a series of loops that you want to work with. For this example, let's go ahead and work with six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But I have to remember, I want to leave a little bit of tail. So if your first loop doesn't have that long of a tail, go ahead and grab your scissors and snip that little loop apart. So that way you have a nice little tail. Now we got to count six stitches again. One, two, three, four, five, six. In these six stitches, we will then begin to work the rest of our yarn through these stitches with all of the loops coming from back to front, okay? So here we go. I have my yarn down flat. I'm gonna take this first loop, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna look at loop number seven. This is the first loop that's attached to my ball of yarn. I'm gonna take loop number seven and I'm gonna push it through the last loop that I counted and then pull it up. Can you see that? Now, working, this would be loop number five if I counted one, two, three, four, five. And it's the next loop available to me attached to my ball. I'm gonna take the next loop available to me attached to the ball and thread it through back to front. Go to the next loop, which would be my loop number four, and the next loop attached to my ball of yarn, and thread it through back to front. And just pull up. I'm just leaving these ones hanging out. I don't have to do anything else to them. Go to the next loop, and then the next one on my ball of yarn, gotta make sure you don't skip one on accident, and go back to front. One thing you can use as far as a way to remember is you're always going to put the new yarn through the old yarn. So the yarn that's attached to your ball of yarn always goes through the actual project stitch. Now I have just worked a row of knit stitches. I still have one, two, three, four, five, six loops, but I don't have to turn my work to work back. I leave my work laying flat the way it is right now. What I do though is working on the next loop attached to my ball of yarn, I go ahead and I thread it through this first loop right here from back to front and pull up. And then so on and so forth. See how easy this is? Here's the next loop, go to the corresponding one on my project and work back to front. Go to the corresponding one on my project and work back to front. I have done another row of knit stitches and I'm creating a really beautiful stockinette stitch. For those of you who aren't knitters, stockinette is actually the way the front of your sweaters typically look with those nice little V's. That's created by doing stockinette stitch. This is what we've created right here simply by doing the knit stitch and our loop at yarn. Pretty neat, right? 
I am going to give you a little word of caution. If you were to make something all in stockinette stitch, it would naturally start to curl around the edges for you. So in order to keep it from curling, you have to do some purl stitches along the sides. Let's learn how to do a purl stitch. That way you will be able to do any stitch you want because you'll know how to knit and purl. When we want to work purl stitches, we're still going to go through all of the loops like we did before. However, instead of taking our loop and putting it from the back going to the front, we aren't going to do that. We are actually going to take our loop and go from the front to the back. You see that? So it'll be easier if you hold your yarn to the front here and working into the next stitch over and the next loop on your ball of yarn, go from the front to the back. From the front to the back. When you do a row of purls, you actually get a nice purl row. You get this bumpy little ridges there. It's not nice and smooth like when you do knitting, you get these ridges. Let's go ahead and do a row of purls back. Now I'm not turning my work, so my work is still laying flat just like it did when I went this direction, but now I'm going to go this direction. So this is the loop I want to work into. I want to go ahead and make sure my yarn is in front. And I'm going to take the first loop that's available to me to use from the ball of yarn and put it from the front to the back on my loops that are in my project. All right, so I just did a row of purls back. Looks pretty neat, right? It looks like these little ridges, we got these rows. I wonder what it looks like on the other side. Let's go ahead and turn our work over. So I'm gonna turn my work over. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? On the back side of our purls, we have what looks like a bunch of knit stitches. How did we get that? We were just purling. Why am I looking at knit stitches? Well, that's simple. The back side of a purl stitch is actually a knit and vice versa. So at the start, when we were working on knit stitches, what do you see down here? We see some purls. And up here, when we were working on purls and we're looking at the back side, now we're looking at knits. Just to make it a little bit more clear, I'll turn it again. This is where we started. We were just working on knits. And up here, this is where we were just working at purls. And if I flip it over, we have pearls down here and knits up here. The reason I'm pointing that out is because that's perfectly normal and I don't want you to think that you've done something wrong because you've just done a whole bunch of pearls and you pick up your work, you're like, wait a minute, I'm looking at knits. That's uh, absolutely the way you knit. The back side of a pearl is a knit and the back side of a knit is a pearl. Now, what if you wanted to combine knits and pearls within the same row to get some really cool ribbing. Let me show you how to do that. To create ribbing, I could start on either side I wish, but I'm just gonna start on this side because this is where we began. To go from a knit stitch to a purl stitch, to a knit stitch to a purl stitch, to a knit stitch to a purl stitch, we will work through each one of these loops just as we did when we did a knit stitch or a purl stitch. The biggest thing to remember is where our yarn is. When we work a knit stitch, our yarn, our working yarn, is coming from the back to the front, and we pull up. If we want this stitch to be a purl, we have to move our yarn to the front of that stitch. Can you see that? See how I'm at the front of that stitch now? And I'm gonna move my loop that's attached to my working yarn through the loop on my project from front to back. Now, if I want this next stitch to be a knit, I have to move my yarn to the back, take the next loop from my working yarn, and thread it from back to front through the loop on my project. One way to remember it is that when we do a knit, we go from back to front, so our yarn has to be in back. When we do a purl, we go from front to back, so our yarn has to be in front. See how those two little things kind of work hand in hand? As we're looking at our project now, as I set it down, we are set up to have a series of stitches that will be knits in a column and stitches that will be purls in a column. The biggest thing we have to do is make sure that we knit the ones that look like knits and purl the ones that look like purls. So without turning my work, I'm gonna let this sit right here 
and I'm looking at this first stitch and I can see that bump right there. You see that bump? That means it's a pearl. I also know I purled that last one, so I, don't, I could just purl it. I know I have to. But if I'm looking at my work, I can see that bump and I know I have to purl that first stitch. So I would go ahead, take the first loop on my working yarn, bring it to the front and go front to back so that I can get my purl. This next one, see how I don't see any bump? I see this nice V right there. That gives me an idea that this is supposed to be a knit stitch because I'm looking at a knit stitch. So if I'm supposed to knit this one, that means my yarn's gonna go from back to front. So I have to make sure my yarn is in back for me to get. Grab my loop from my working yarn, go from back to front into the loop on my project. Working in the next stitch, I can see that bump, see that bump? That lets me know it's a purl. So if I got lost, all I have to do is find what the stitch looks like. If it's a bump, I know it's a purl and I go from front to back. The next stitch, if I'm looking and I don't see a bump and I see this nice V, I know I have to bring my yarn to the back and I have to knit, bringing that loop from the back to the front. Knowing that when we do stockinette and we do all of our knits and the back side is going to look like pearls and we do all of our pearls and the back side is going to look like knits. If we have combined knits and pearls within the same row, what do you think the opposite side is going to look like? Well, let me show you. So we take a look down here. Remember, we started with the knit, we went to pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl. As I turn my work, check it out. It looks like we still have ribbing going on because when I purled that last stitch, as I'm looking at the opposite side now, it looks like a knit on the opposite side. This looks like a purl on this side, but it was a knit on the other side. This is a knit on this side, but it's a purl on the other side. This is a purl on this side, but it's a knit on the other side. You see how that works up? That's why people will tell you that ribbing is reversible because it looks the same on both sides. I'm getting this really cool ribbed look on both sides of my fabric. Now once you're finished with your project, you need to do what's called binding off. To bind off your work, you want to go ahead and work in the opposite direction as you've been working. Meaning, if I were continuing on, I would work this loop here into this loop and work this direction. But because I want to finish off this project, I will start down here. And working this way, I will take the second loop in and thread it through the last loop. Then I carry on, take the next loop in and thread it through that one. When you get to the very end, you can go ahead and what we want to do is we want to get a little bit of length here. So we're going to snip this apart so that that's opened and then cut that, take this, thread it through that final loop so it doesn't go anywhere give it a pull and you have bound off your work. You've bound off your fabric. I've seen videos where they just take this end here and they literally just weave it in and out through all of the open stitches that they have working around here. Kind of going along with the same idea that you don't need any other tools to actually finish off your project. You can just weave them in and finish off and you've bound off. Now that you know how to knit and how to purl, you actually can make any project you want using the Loop It yarn. So much fun, so easy, great for adults and kids alike. I know you're gonna love this yarn. Run out, grab Loop It yarn today, and enjoy making your very first knit project. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Bye. Subscribe to our channel and share your projects using the hashtag MakeItWithMichaels.